Hello, everyone, and welcome to a cameraless version of me. Um, my name is, for those who don't know, my name is Kyle. Uh, uh, I'm one of the admins at MSP Geek, and this is another episode of the GeekCast Data Dumps. Um, except we're doing a little twist. This is uh, on business. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna be discussing uh, some information uh, that I think is very valuable. Uh, we have a lot of discussion uh, happening around this topic, so I figured I'd throw up a video and uh, we could have a, a quick discussion. Um, I recorded this yesterday, uh, and <laughs> after I got done to having my lovely, you know, intro and moved over to uh, what you're looking at now, uh, the audio cut out, uh, which is very lovely. So I'm having to re-record this um, today. So uh, to, to give a quick overview of what we're going to do, um, we're going to be discussing how to do uh, how to calculate contract profitability uh, from a basic level. Um, a lot of MSPs don't actually really track this. They track, you know, if if, if the the bank account's green at the end of the month, we're good, right? Um, but it's important to understand what contracts are making you money and what contracts you're losing out on. Uh, and so we're we're going to talk about that today. Um, before I jump into this lovely. Uh, worked really hard to build this invoice out. Um, MSP GeekCon is still available. Uh, tickets are still available. Early Bird is running until the end of the month. Uh, so January 31st, um, they will be over. Uh, also, our call for speakers, if you're interested in uh, providing educational content, um, we're open to anyone, vendors, consultants, MSPs, um, anyone who wants to provide educational content to our uh, attendees, feel free to submit a session. Um, you can, I'll put a link down to our website so you can go and visit uh, and do all the cool things. Um, super excited to, to see everyone hopefully this year and uh, let's, let's get into it. So what we're looking at is a very basic uh, generalized invoice that an MSP would send out, all right? MSP Enterprises Corp LLC Incorporated um, is invoicing awesome client uh, and we have it broken out into servers and workstations. Um, it's an ACE contract, so you have individual, uh, you know, you ha we have it split out to each individual item. I didn't lump them together because a lot of uh, MSPs have a different cost for servers and workstations, and uh, math is hard. So I just wanted to make sure that we had a, an easy thing to follow here. Um, so it's important to understand that um, what you're looking at is not, necessarily the full amount of money that you get in. Uh, for each server and each workstation that you do, they have something called hard costs. These are costs associated with deploying that machine, right? So um, let's scroll, let me, uh, don't, don't cheat uh, and look ahead. Um, so let's look at some hard costs here, uh, right? We have our RMM agent, our AV, our EDR, you know, and we have, uh, security awareness training listed here as well. Um, but this can be anything that you have that you deploy for your 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 clients, your machines. Um, yeah. Proof point, uh, you know, email security or anything like that. All of that needs to be tracked and measured. Um, and it's super important that that goes on and has a cost associated with it because those are, you, you've paid for those. The, the, the That comes out of the revenue for deploying that agent. Um, so to make math easy, I have uh, our, our total hard cost per machine is $10, right? So we have our total hard cost of $650. Um, so out of our 6,500, right? We have our revenue of $6,500, right? Super simple. Um, this is how much we build the client. This is how much they paid. Our hard costs are $650. For us to be able to have this deployed and have our tools available, we have, we have to remove our hard costs because that's already paid. So our net for this client is 8,500, excuse me, $5,850. Uh, all right, so far, so good. Um, now we get into the fun part. Uh, now we get into the real uh, understanding if a, a contract is profitable. Uh, managed service providers, obviously, you know, they provide services. So you don't necessarily, you don't have a product to sell. The product you sell is time, right? So if someone opens a ticket and you resolve that ticket, the time it took you to resolve that ticket is your product. Uh, and you want that to be efficient with meeting your client expect your client standard expectations for, you know, 
satisfaction, right? You don't want to take it two hours to reset a, or two, two years to reset a password. Um, you want to try to do that as quickly as possible. Um, so we need to understand how much this client is taking of our time. So if we look at awesome clients, uh, if we go through awesome clients tickets and we run a report and we get a report of all the tickets for, let's say this is December, uh, and understand all of their help desk tickets uh, that our help desk team, you know, our service desk team has worked on. Um, we gather all of that, all of the time that they've put in, uh, and we can put it down here. So we have our ticket, we we have our ticket, we have our actual hours, and then we have our build hours. Um, so build hours are generally uh, a rounded up estimation of your hours, depending on the PSA. I know like manage, you can spe you can specify a round up for every quarter hour, which is what I've got here listed. Um, other PSAs have the same ability. Uh, so when you are looking at um, how much you would bill, like if, if a client would come up to you, uh, you know, out of the blue and say, I need you to install this piece of software on my machine, um, as if you were a break fix or, you know, just a standard, you would bill them a specific amount of hours, right? So it would take, you know, I will bill you an hour. It took me an hour to install this. I, I will bill you at that. And that hourly rate that you have, if you don't have it, you should come up with one so that you have some measurement by it. But that is what you want to look at. So if we look at all of our hours here, right? Um, if we go all the way to the bottom, we have 100, we spent 102 hours on this client. Uh, 102 hours of actual time and 108 of billable time. So if we come up here and we put our actual hours and we divide by our net, that means we have put in, uh, that means we have billed this client $56, $57 an hour. Um, that is effectively, that is our effective hourly rate for this client. Uh, that is very low. For most MSPs that I've seen and uh, some of the data sets that I've seen, um, so obviously this is a problem. Um, now, I don't want to caution you. Uh, we've identified a problem, but it's not necessarily we haven't. We need to identify the root cause of said problem. So while our hourly rate may not be, let's say, uh, we have a standard rate of. Mm, a hundred dollars a machine or, or an hour, right? Um, so that means we're off by a little bit. Uh, the difference between these two, the reason why these can be so off is wild, or you can is a lot of things that affect this. Um, for instance, uh, time, right? That you're only going by what your technicians have entered for your actual hours. If uh, Let's say that someone accidentally left their screen open for four hours for a password reset. Obviously, it's not going to take four hours for a password reset. You know, we might want to, you, you, in a timesheet review, you would check and be like, all right, that didn't really take that long. How long did it really take? 20 minutes, cool, adjust. Um, making sure your time is actually in. Uh, if this is overly inflated, uh, if we change this to, let's say, 20 hours, right? That's a huge hourly rate. We're doing, we're making so much money off this client, but this number is not true, right? If you actually go in and look at all this, all the data, you know, you're at 102 hours. You're not at 20 hours. Um, obviously, you want to make sure that a critical piece of understanding where your contracts are at is making sure you have time entered. Um, it's not about micromanaging the employee. It's not about uh, making sure they're doing work, that they're billing a specific amount. It's about making sure that the contract and the time you're spending on the, the client is uh, a, a, a suitable number. Um, and it's super important. There also may be the instance where you're just undercharging the client. Um, maybe... You know, they're just a needy client that takes a lot of time and resources, but they don't have a lot of machines. They don't have a lot of, uh, you know, things that you normally bill on. It may be time to raise their rates. It may be time to increase their, uh, you know, their their total. So maybe we'll maybe we do two hundred, an endpoint. Now we're over our uh, estimated. Maybe we do one seventy five. Right, we're at one hundred four at that point. Um, 
some people have provisions in their contracts that say they can only raise X percent. Uh, it might be time to start working towards getting to that number that you need them to be at to be profitable, to be at your standard rates. Um, and once, uh, so that, that, and that's, that's ultimately the basics of understanding how uh, a, a, your, your contracts are profitable or not. Um, once you have this and you can start making some basic determinations of what clients are good or bad and your data is accurate, which I want to be absolutely clear, this is super important. Time against contracts is uh, the lifeblood of your, <laughs> if you're going to be profitable or not, and to determine if they're profitability or not. Um, but then you start getting into things that are uh, extra important. Right, as your business grows and your maturity grows as a business, you want to start looking at things like uh, individual costs. So while my estimated hourly rate is $104 in this instance um, from the changes we've made, um, my cost is not the same for all of these tickets, right? If my project engineer, you know, if my lead engineer worked on this term list ticket, uh, his cost is going to be much, much, much higher than my intern that I hired and is doing, you know, at, right out of college, you know, you can start determining uh, the amount of hours such as, let's say, you know, level one, who spent, you know, 60 hours, uh, level two, 120 hours, or let's... Uh, let's do 20, uh, and then level three, 10, and then miscellaneous management time, 10, right? So roughly a hundred, um, but this is say going to cost you, uh, to ignore, like this is just for fun numbers, right? 30,000, uh, a year, uh, 50 a year, 75 a year and 85 a year, right? So these costs, like you want, obviously you want most of your time being spent on level one because it's cheaper for you as an individual. Um, and you want to have all of your level, you want all your tickets to be solved by your level one team and less going to your level three team because they're much more expensive resource. Um, and you want to make sure their time is uh, not spent doing very basic things, um, thereby being disastrous for your uh uh, your contract profitability but that's another video we can get into um because there's a whole like a whole bunch of other sections you can do like shadow billable um you can do uh you can do estimations on you can like cal you understand what they're expected to bill you can do calculations on how much time you could spend before uh you're outside of your hourly rate there's all kinds of great stuff out there um that you can do but for for at least the very basic understanding of how to do your, these calculations and at least have a starting point to understand where issues may lie in your business and uh, what clients may be uh, getting a better deal than other ones uh, to make sure it's all play and fair. Um, this is how you do it. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, concerns, I'm, I, I love having discussions about this and data and data analysis. So um, you can hit me up on MSP Geek. You can leave a comment uh, down below. Uh, just let me know. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you at MSP GeekCon.